Hello everyone, and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're tuning in from. My name is Jacob Lee, and I'm a software engineer at Langchain. I'm thrilled to be here presenting at the 2023 Google Web ML Summit, and today I'll be talking a bit about how to effectively build with large language models in the browser. And a quick aside before I get started. If you're not familiar with Langchain, we're an open source framework for building context-aware reasoning applications. More concretely, this includes orchestrating pipelines that parse, format, and retrieve data from various sources to present as context to an LLM, as well as various useful ways of prompting and chaining different model calls together to build sophisticated and powerful applications. To start things off, a bit about the current state of WebML models. It's no secret that for a long time, machine learning was mostly a Python game. However, all the recent investments in tooling and developer experience in the space have made many formerly arcane machine learning concepts accessible to a much wider slice of developers. And with JavaScript being the most widely used programming language in the world, it's no surprise that this has included many web developers who naturally sought to use these tools in web environments. As a result, there's been a lot of awesome development in WebML lately. A few to call out here are Zeneva, who's the X in the middle of your screen there, who's done some really cool work on quantizing hugging face models to make them smaller and more suited for the browser while still retaining effectiveness. There's a machine learning compilation for their amazing work on Web LLM, running some powerful large models with GPU acceleration. And of course, TensorFlow.js, who I'm, I'm sure you've heard a lot about by now, and have long been leaders and pioneers in web ML. One thing all the previous models and frameworks have in common is that they're all open source, which is a prerequisite to running models in the browser because they run locally on a user's machine. LLMs, on the other hand, have been to date pretty dominated by private companies with pockets deep enough to train powerful models like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Google. An open question is whether the best open source LLMs can compete with the likes of GPT-4, Claude 2, and Palm, or at least approximate enough functionality for a wide enough variety of use cases. And recent benchmarks suggest that this is becoming the case. The largest variant of a, the, excuse me, the largest variant of a recent state-of-the-art open source model, Llama 2 from Meta, stacks up quite well with GPT 3.5 Turbo on language benchmarks. Though it lags behind on coding benchmarks, it of course has the added benefit of being free and completely private. So to test this for myself, I decided to try recreating one of the most popular use cases of Langchain with open source, locally running software, a chain that performs retrieval augmented generation, or RAG for short and allows you to chat with your documents. The general idea is to customize LLM-generated output using data from an external source as context. Though this can be as simple as stuffing the entire source document into the prompt, we often have to work around limitations, like the maximum number of tokens the model can accept, and distracting the LLM with unnecessary information. And here's one way this can work. We first split the document into semantic chunks with a text splitter, then use an embeddings model to convert each chunk into a vector that captures the chunk's meaning. Converting text into a representation like this is called embedding the text. We then load these vectors into a specialized database called a vector store that allows us to search for a similar vector to an input. Our strategy will be later to search for the most meaningfully similar chunks given a query and feed the text from the original document corresponding to that chunk back into the LLM to generate a final output. And there's one additional thing we need to account for. During conversations, it's common to reference past interactions with pronouns or other references. For example, you might ask, who's this document about? And then follow up with, do they know JavaScript? They, in this case, would be a reference to the answer to the first question. This can throw off the vector store search. So to get around this issue, we add an additional step 
that passes the chat history and user query into an LLM and asks it to rephrase the query as a standalone question. That's a question free of references to past chat history and use that to search our vector store. We then take the resulting chunk, original question, and chat history and pass it to a final LLM call to synthesize an answer. Here's a quick outline of the specific OSS pieces I used for my fully local chat over documents chain. A new state-of-the-art small LLM called Mistral run using a handy tool called a Llama, Zeniver's Transformers.js to load a hugging face embeddings model, and a neat open source WebAssembly vector store called Voy. And I actually shipped a live version of this on Vercel as a next.js app. You can try it for yourself at webml-demo.vercel.app, but I'll quickly show off how it looks now, live. Cool. So I'm going to navigate to my Next.js app here, move myself up here so I'm not in the way, and I'm going to start by uploading a old resume of mine. And what's going to happen behind the scenes here is exactly what I showed you on the previous slide. It's going to read the document and embed, split it into chunks and embed those chunks into a vector store. And now if I try asking, who is this document about? It's going through the steps and it's going to query the vector store with my query here. And it tells me this document appears to be about Jacob J. Lee, which is correct. And I can ask a follow-up question such as, do they know JavaScript? And it'll be re it'll rephrase that question, free of stand uh, free of references into a standalone question, which should successfully get good results from the vector store. Yes, based on the information provided in the search results, it appears that Jacob J. Lee has experience with JavaScript, and it goes into a bit about my experience there. Pretty cool. So effectively querying over chatting over documents with all local models. Back to the talk. So to better help under, uh, to help you better understand the individual steps in this chain, I prepared traces using our external LLM observability and tracing platform, Langsmith, that you can interact with after the talk at the links in the slide. So I, I do have a slight confession to make, however, and it's one that underscores some of the current difficulties with building with large language models in the browser. Olama isn't running in the browser. It's actually a desktop app that runs on my MacBook. So why, do you ask? Why did I do this? Uh, I previously mentioned some of the cool efforts from the machine learning compilation to run LLMs directly in the browser. But the fact is, large language models are large, and techniques and new developments are coming out almost monthly at this point. My initial version of this talk used the smallest variant of Llama 2, the 7 billion parameter variant, which still took up seven gigabytes of disk space on my computer. And even then a week, while recording this talk, a week later, a new hyped model came out, Mistral, which I ended up using for the demo. The more powerful variant of Llama that performed well against GPT 3.5 Turbo requires 129 gigabytes of disk space and far more RAM. And bigger ones are coming out all the time. The bottom screenshot is from the Llama team announcing support for another 180 billion parameter model that requires a, requires a whopping 192 gigabytes of RAM, not disk space. Since I don't have a supercomputer, I wasn't able to run it for the demo. And so even with a gigabit internet connection, downloading such a large model on page load adds a ton of latency and startup time. Caching protocols aren't currently standardized, which can result in the browser cache filling up quite quickly. So while someday folks like Zeneva may be able to quantize effective LLMs and make them feasible to run and cache in the browser for individual sites you visit, because of the current size of useful LLMs, it made more sense for me to ask the user to download a powerful general purpose LLM that they could update on their own and expose to a web app using a shell command. But since your average non-technical web app user wouldn't be comfortable running such a command, there's a missing piece here. And that piece is a new browser API 
that would allow web apps to perform effective text inference with large language models. It would essentially recreate the shell command using a pop-up asking the user for permission to run inference via on a locally running powerful general purpose foundation model such as Mistral or Llama 2. The web app could then take advantage of some of the reasoning capabilities that a larger model provides while delegating smaller domain specific tasks like text embeddings to in-browser models, much like in the demo. And while locally running models aren't ubiquitous at the moment, both the software and hardware required to run such models is improving rapidly. Apple Silicon GPUs are now standard in MacBooks and iPhones, and in the future, I believe it'll be possible for just about every device to run an effective LLM locally. And that's it. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed my talk. If you'd like to keep in touch, you can follow me at Hakubu on X, formerly Twitter, and Langchain at Langchain AI. I've also included links for both the live demo app, the source code for the app, and all the technologies used in it below. Thanks again for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the summit.